Welcome to the David Spizak Show. I am coming to you live from the NADA Exhibition Hall in Dallas, Texas, and it is a true honor for me. I'm humbled and honored. It's a complete pleasure for me to have as my guest, Jay Vijayan, the founder and CEO of Techion. Jay, thank you so much for taking the time to join me. You're most welcome. It's my pleasure, uh, David, looking forward to our uh, conversation today. I am very much looking forward to this conversation. I've been looking forward to it all week. So, Jay, I want to start with this. I, I had the pleasure of being here yesterday when you made your presentation. And, you know, clearly there's a reason why uh, this booth literally has been packed from the moment they open the doors. This is like a Black Friday sale. They open the doors and, you know, most of these booths, it takes an hour or two. You start to get people filtering in. And this booth has been packed. And I was here at 5.45 last night. The lights went off at 5. There were still people here. And it's for good reason, because of the innovation that you've created that transforms dealerships. I just had Doug from Longo Toyota, and it has completely transformed his dealership. Well, one of the things I love about your organization and you is you never stop innovating. Yesterday, you actually announced two brand new products, one having to do with sentiment, giving your 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 users not just the dealer but literally every user in the organization the opportunity to share their sentiment their feelings their how they feel about their techion system would you mind sharing a little bit of details Absolutely. on that uh, <clears throat> thank you david um yes as, as you said um glad to see it's like a black black friday sale but except that there is no discounts <laughs> <laughs> it's more like apple <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have, a, see, I think it's uh, I mean, thanks to everyone. I think we are honored to see people coming in for the value that we deliver. Like you said, innovation is key. Really, really important. I'll give one simple example. I mean, this goes to the philosophy of who we are as a company. Very simple because, you know, um, from uh, automotive industry and dealership, um, you know, overall um, industry and people understand money. I'll just give relation on uh, just by money in terms of value creation. So if you can take maybe, you know, last decade, let's forget about last two, three years. They're like, you know, anomaly sometimes, maybe good, you know, for the industry. But overall, just take, you know, 10 years from 2010 to 2020. If you can take some of the, you know, big companies, in the automotive software space okay think about the value they have created just think about the valuation of those companies it is i haven't seen those growing in fact some areas it just shrinked in the same decade tech companies there are many but let's take the big three which we we all would know apple amazon google each one of them became a trillion dollar company why Right? They have products and all of those, but one of the key things they do while in the automotive space, the software side has been shrinking, literally, you know, companies that were 10 billion became like 5 billion, 6 billion in value. 10 years, a decade we've lost just because of no innovation, the value was shrinking. In the same period, there are companies which just grew from, you know, a few tens of millions of dollars to a trillion dollar company. So... The point I'm trying to make is innovation drives a lot of things because you can list the number of products these companies have launched. So now goes, going back to Techion's philosophy is fundamentally that's in our DNA to constantly innovate. You know this well. There are many people who didn't believe that we could do what we did even with just the DMS. But of course we went beyond DMS, CRM, digital retailing, payroll, you know, connected. Service. So the point is, yeah, service. We just kept, and you saw the product yesterday, we launched the vehicle trial uh, tracking and the customer sentiment. How do you track live customer sentiment? So that goes to kind of, I would say, if you would call it as the DNA of the company, it has to be that way so that you can constantly innovate, grow, deliver value, and you create value for everyone. You know, and I want to stay uh, right there right there for a second. Well, first of all, though, I wanted just to make a comment with respect to that, uh, what you called out the contrast between those auto side and the tech side. You know, the, when, you, when you talk to analysts, as you know, on, on Wall Street, they're not valuing you necessarily based on where you are today. 
they're valuing you based on your ability to be able to, where are you going to be in five to 10 years from now? So oftentimes right. you will hear that a stock has a value and they'll say it's going to grow into that value, but they assess that value today. So think about this. The tech companies are valued based on their ability to scale and move in the direction where customers are going. On the other side, when you contrast that, uh, compare that with the auto, they're saying, well, the customers are going here and auto's not ready. So then it causes that value to contract, to reduce. Second thing I wanted to say is one of the things that you mentioned was the net promoter score. And, you know, I work with a lot of dealers around the country and we've been dealing with CSI for how long? For decades, OEM CSI. I want any dealership to think about this. If you're a CSI and every dealer will tell me I'm at 95, 97, 98, that's compared to another dealer. What would that CSI score be if they would say that's compared? They ask your customer, how does it compare to Apple? How does it compare to Amazon? Your CSI score would probably be 20 if you're all honest. So what happens? They came out with Net Promoter, right? And the Net Promoter score is a much more accurate representation of how a client feels about you. A score of a zero says, yeah, I don't care. It's not good. It's not affecting me. And to be able to earn a score, if you haven't dealt with a net promoter, only a 10 and a nine counts for the good, right? The seven and eight is basically a zero. Everything else detracts. What you've created when I saw that was essentially a live net promoter score for the very people that are using your system. Is that fair? Yeah, that's right. See, it's important. It starts there, right? So from a, if you take a dealership, if your employees are happy, they can do their job if they're enabled and empowered. They're going to you know, do the best to your clients, the consumers. So to my point yesterday, when I came into the industry, of course, I want to know more about the industry. So I was trying to search information to say how we can be better. Of course, when we start building, I want to make sure that we build something significantly better and compelling. So I, to my team, I was asking, hey, can, can I get the NPS score of other players in the industry, software players who deliver to dealers, the main ones whom even we would compete with, I couldn't find it. Because I know today you can find everything in Google. So I tried Google. I started asking people. I couldn't find, I couldn't find, I couldn't find. Then finally people told me it doesn't exist because they don't measure one. Because they know if it's, if they measure one, it's going to be negative, not right? It's, yeah. going, it's not, going, not very good. So what we said is, you know what? We're going to go one better. We are doing NPS score, but let's do this. Measure live user sentiment and, a, and look at, at a dashboard. So what we did, I'll tell you exactly. I showed it yesterday. Every single user has a voice. Every single user. doesn't matter. It's your, you know, parts technician or a service advisor or... Support. Uh, yeah, business office or support. You know, um, anyone who's using Techion can click on it and give feedback live because we don't shy away. Yes, it's okay sometimes to get you know, critical feedback. We get that. We are not perfect and we make mistakes, but we at least brave enough to say, okay, tell us what it is. We take it. And the good news is I put a dashboard. I I put a massive shining light on it. What that means is I look at a dashboard and my direct reports, everyone knows and every single manager, every department knows that I'm looking at this and I'm going to follow up and they follow up with their team. And by department, we know how we are doing as a product, like parts, service, you know, retail, how are we doing? It's been phenomenal, eye-opening, even for me, right, to go change things in the right way. And my team is empowered. Now they're like, okay, they're all looking at the same thing. And they're like, okay, I know my product is not doing well in this area. I need to go improve it. So I think it's a great thing. In fact, you may have, I don't know if um, Doug mentioned, but dealers looked at it and said like, wow, I mean, I got a comment directly from someone forwarding a comment from one of the dealer principals saying, oh, this is the company that walks the talk. I was proud of it. But more than that, they said, can we use this for our clients? Can you guys provide this <laughs> as a product so that I can get live user sentiment from my client? Which is awesome. Tremendous idea. You know, I think it's a little bit analogous to the uh, warranty system that the OEMs implemented years ago. So if you're a dealer, you don't share all of your data with OEMs, do you? But there's a couple things you're required to share. One is your financial statement. Got to close it by the 10th business day and share it. And the other is warranty. All warranty ROs are going to go to the OEM. Why? Why do they do that? Anybody know? It allows them to get an understanding rolled up 
of what's working, what's not working, what are issues that exist. Maybe something is is so so dominant over time that it becomes a recall issue, but it also may drive how they change the next version of that car. And you essentially are being able to do the same thing. It's going to drive that innovation in a direction that's going to become more and more. It's almost like machine learning, right? Where you're learning about your customers. Yeah, I'll, it's a great example you gave, right? So end of the day, the customers, whether you like it or not, the clients, I'm talking about the end clients rule, they literally dictate which business is going to succeed, which business is not going to succeed. If they like the level of service that they get, the level of transparency they get, they're going to come in, they're going to keep coming, the loyalty is going to be there and all of those are going to be there. If they don't like it, they're not going to be coming in at all, right? So that part is really important for dealerships to understand and for us as a software company to enable them is really important. Let's shift a little bit as it pertains to innovation. So what happens if you take innovation and you combine it with client feedback, will you end up with something like the vehicle tracking that you announced yesterday? You mentioned yeah. vehicle tracking yeah, yeah. and how that came about. Would you mind sharing that? Yeah, uh, I'll, going back to your previous one, I want to touch on that and there is quite a few things. First is, you mentioned warranty, right? There is this manufacturer integration, OEM integrations. I think, unfortunately, both sides haven't put in the right amount of time to make it seamless. As you know well, Warranty is one of the pain points for dealers. I think it's a pain point for OEMs as well. They submit a tons of warranty. In fact, many dealers use another agency in between to process their warranty. It's the money that they need to receive doesn't come back on time. So it's a big problem. These are the problems can be solved. And we already solved it with a few OEMs. There is a few more we can work with them. Take, put priority to those and solve it. Now, coming back to you know vehicle tracking, End of the day, it's very, very important. That's the biggest commodity that, you know, the industry is selling to a consumer. So I've seen this, I, when I visit dealers, I visit all the time. One of the biggest problems they face and they spend a tons and tons of money and time and resources is where is the car? <laughs> you know this, right? Sounds like a simple question, but it's many times a million dollar question or more. Like you keep searching, where's the car, right? Service. You, you, it's not easy and to go find it, it takes a lot of time. And you mentioned this, David, I think yesterday, today's consumers, when they walk in, they value time exponentially more than dollars. They look at the moment they drop the car, you, mean, you, you, you said this and it's real. I do that, like look at my watch right away, like how soon I can get out of here. So it's so important for us to keep track of the vehicle for many, many use cases to ensure we deliver the best experience for the consumers. There is also other technical difficulties in the car, right? If you don't do solve those problems, these are not going to be comprehensive. What I mean by that? You can't rely all the time on Wi-Fi. There are like underground garages. There are like open fields where Wi-Fi doesn't really touch. Not all the time. So, okay, GPS works in open field, but it doesn't work in underground garage. So, we found a solution that works every single scenario, right? It, it took time, but it has to be economical. It has to be a solution that works pretty much in any any place. And that's kind of what we came up with. And fortunately, we always have great partners who are willing to work with us, try it as a pilot. So we tried with a very large dealer in the East Coast, literally six floors, many underground. Mm. So we're able to truly try all of those things and make it work. It's only, you know, normally when you develop software, you get to a point where you're ready to go into, uh, you may have heard beta testing, but before beta testing is alpha testing, right? Alpha testing is you're trying to break it. You want to make sure that it works. Then you beta test it, which is with a client. And so you basically had that live alpha and beta testing with a real client. And it's really, again, this is something else that's part of your DNA, the fact that you went out and acquired uh, two dealerships in Northern California. So this is crazy. Find another uh, DMS vendor out here and say, hey, do you own any dealerships? No. Have you ever owned a dealership? No. Okay. The fact that you went out and had the wisdom to buy dealers so that everything that your clients like Longor is using, 
was first lab tested in an actual dealership with actual dealership employees with actual customers. True? Very true. So, <laughs> thank you. So, this happened, I think, three years ago. And when I first told this to my team, my direct execs were like a bit shocked. Um, they know I do this sometimes to, you know, <laughs> go. But luckily, I'm not right all the time, but I'm right as many times where I have the confidence from them. So they said, they were like, oh, why? Why should we do Why do you, why do you want to do, do that, right? They said, Jay, there's a lot of risk. The market can go down, you know, you can put in a lot of money and get into a loss. And on top of it, they said, Jay, maybe, you know, our customers, dealers might say, think that we are a competition because we have dealership. I said, you know what? Weighing pros and cons, there's a lot more pros because product-wise, we can understand the business deeper. When I'm in a conversation with you know dealers in the past, if you're a purely a software render, I think fairly they look at you and say like, "What the hell you do? You know about my business?" Oh, yeah, you stop to the level where you can code and deliver software. Don't tell me how I do my business. Fair enough. So now we said, you know what? Let's remove that. We own a dealership. We understand the process. My team needs to go really deep into that, understand what exactly is happening, then solve it in the right way. And honestly, I it was not a surprise for me. Some of my team members, I should say. Surprisingly, every conversation when we bring up to a dealer that we own a dealership, oh, it's so positive. <laughs> they immediately, the paradigm shifts. I can see in their eyes, literally, like, oh, okay, now you know. You're so, one of us. Yeah, one of us. And we, they relate to when we talk about their processes. They're not defensive. Oh, it's really awesome. And I think the value, the great news, we are, we were also part of the last three years ride. We made tons of money in that dealership, in those dealerships. And the more value for me was my product team, my engineering, my support, you know, quality. Teams had like, you know, literally access to that dealership 24 by 7. You know, I I love this law of indirect effort. I've mentioned it once other t one other time. Law of indirect effort says you always in life get more through indirect means than through direct means. The way I translate that with your with your uh, innovative software is there's obvious things, right? The innovation is obvious. The data integration is obvious. Uh, getting rid of this the disparate systems, third party solutions is obvious. But I actually think the more I, I experience it, that there's things that are under the surface that are not so obvious. So you take the vehicle tracking. Have you ever, guys, have you ever thought about, has anybody here ever used Grubhub? Uber Eats, right? Now, when a lot of those systems came out, you know, there's two kinds of people in the world. People that have more time than money. People have more money than time. True? If you have more money than time, what do you value? Time. You're willing to pay more just to get me out. If you have more time than money, you tend to value value, right? More than ever. But we found something interesting. It turned out that the people that we thought was going to use those systems, which is just going to be the upper half of the socioeconomic, was not true. Because it turns out that everybody is short on time. Everybody values their time. And the proof is, if you go out and you buy a $7 sandwich on Uber Eats, and you pay $5 or 6 bucks to have it delivered. That's how much people value time. So as I thought about your vehicle tracking when you announced it yesterday, and I think about how much time does that sell, everybody's talking about, I need to get my service clients out faster. I need to go from a three-hour sale to a one-hour sale. Well, how do you do that if your salesperson says, I'll be right back, I gotta go find the car. Yeah, right? you know, say, I'll be right back. Yeah. How many people have seen this? I'll be right back, I gotta go find the car or they have the support person looking for the car, right? So now I get to save, save that time. And it's not only great for the client, but what does that do for the morale of my employees? You just made my job easier. You've made it easier for me to make money. You've made it, me look better to my customer, law of indirect effort. I think that you're gonna to come to find that the sentiment is going to end up having being a causal factor of retention going up. And we're going to find the same thing with the vehicle tracking. Do you do you think that's fair? Absolutely fair. Um, you articulated well, uh, David. Absolutely fair. And you and you mentioned this, right? 
when a client is in a dealership for anyone any customer today every minute is important every second is important so every place you can you know try to reduce improve your process make it seamless reduce cut that time to get them in and out as fast but still make them feel really good you know you can literally i mentioned this in my speech be profitable in any trend it doesn't matter market is up or down yeah you're going to make a little bit more or a little bit less but you still be profitable wonderful there is one other really exciting announcement yesterday and and for somebody here who geeks out on data and loves solving problems in dealerships um you handed something to dealers you're providing something to dealers that is unimaginable has been unimaginable you actually announced a platform that as of now allows or soon will allow a dealer what would you think about this to be able to create their own tech product inside of techion so say you have a situation with fni and you want to be able to improve cash flow and you have an idea how to do something better you've never had any programming experience never done coding in your life you can access this new product inside of techion you can concept something you could build it without any coding language and launch that product and the second that you launch it it is already fully integrated is that fair absolutely fair absolutely it makes fair. me want to go back to work for a dealership like <laughs> yeah. i would I, i would be the the nutty professor in there i would have so much fun doing that that's amazing yeah. thank you david i mean honestly um it's great to see your level of excitement you've been in the industry how long only 42 years of learning years. it's awesome so it is you know really really important to empower um right so why do you need to see the way we think about this you know businesses evolve of course we try our best you know we continue to deliver continue to innovate but businesses evolve but why should we you know shackle our customers to come to us every single time right so why so we delivered a platform and we are in pilot working with you know um early early dealers we're going to launch it mainstream it's really cool i'm excited about that it's it's a low code platform not no code but it's a low code platform but we have tutorials very quickly for anyone to learn you don't have to be a software engineer you don't have to be a programmer but like david mentioned you can build on top of techion you know i can give another simple example right suddenly you start a fleet business in your dealership it's not big yet so you don't have to go acquire a different software if you have you know a couple of people who are a little bit it savvy just you know use that platform to develop an app and then it's only for you and it seamlessly integrates because it's on top of techion platform integrates with whatever you already have and in the future we will enhance it truly so that you can even publish that app to others if you wish I got a question. So if I happen to be a, a a dealership group that owns 15 stores and I have you know 3M was famous uh for this is they actually would encourage their employees to innovate. And if you innovated something like the post-it note, the person who created that, you became essentially the division head of that which you innovated. So if I created that app it would not only apply to my store but it would work in any store in my group so can i Absolutely. make a bold, can i make a bold prediction one of those apps i guarantee you somebody's going to do one of the biggest pain points is alternate transportation loaner cars there is no way for me to create other than a, a product called trd which doesn't easily integrate with anything um but a way for me to manage the utilization and efficiency of my loaner fleet or pick up and delivery would be groundbreaking for dealers because it is other than personnel it's the largest expense in a service department operation it's a great example you you know you're going to have many of these scenarios as i said businesses evolve trends evolve so if you empower our partners they know their business they're on techion platform already they know techion platform it's easy to quickly extend time is we mentioned time for businesses equally and maybe more time is even more important 
so why wait for another you know someone else to provide something to you and wait and wait and wait now you are fully empowered to go do it biggest pain point i believe in auto right now is the tech stack right the average dealership has between 8 and 15 systems they're dealing with 8 to 15 support teams 8 to 15 trainings 8 to 15 invoices none of them talk to each other all disparate is that true So can you imagine what you're providing me as a dealer is the ability to to simultaneously do a couple of things. Number one, innovate. Number two, do it in a way that's in my intelligent best interest. Do it in a way that's immediately integrated while I'm getting rid of the disparate systems, but I'm I'm creating essentially my own customized tech stack. True? Absolutely. Yeah, that is open that is That is that is innovation on innovation on innovation. Well, Jay, I want to thank you again. It's uh it's been an honor and and you've been so gracious with your time. My pleasure. Really enjoyed the conversation. Thank you David. so much. Thank you. Thank you and thank you for joining. Thank you.